Thinking of applying to medical schools in the United States? Whether you're from the US or not, we're going to be covering the exact steps that you need to take in order to get that coveted admission into anywhere from Stanford to Harvard. This video is going to be a general guide, complete with the timeline that you need to follow to complete all the necessary steps. First things first, let's identify the key components of your application process. These include the schools you want to apply to, your academic record, your MCAT, your primary application which has your personal statement and letters of recommendation, your secondaries, and finally the interview. If you don't know what some of these words mean, don't worry at all. We're going to cover everything in this video. Oh yes, and we'll also be going over timelines in terms of when to do certain things near the end. This will really help put everything into perspective. Your first step is to make a full list of the schools you want to apply to. Some considerations you should keep in mind are the academic requirements, the location, the quality of education, supports, and many other things. Some tools you can use for MD schools are the MSAR, and for DO schools, you can use the DO Explorer. These are really helpful for comparing schools and coming to a decision about where you really want to go. MD schools grant you with a Doctor of Medicine degree, while DO schools offer you with a Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine degree. They both have differences and we're not going to go over them in this video, but if you want to check them out, check out our podcast with doctors and physicians in the DO field. Essentially, MDs offer you with a typical way that you see in hospitals, while DOs offer a more holistic approach to healthcare. They both also have different platforms through which you can apply to, and we're mainly going to focus on MDs in this video. No matter what degree you choose though, you're still going to be a practicing physician. Something else you might want to take into account is whether a school has an early decision program. This essentially forces you to apply to only one American medical school that you've designated for that program, at least until October 1st. However, if you do get selected for an interview, you are among the first to be interviewed. This is a really big deal because admissions in the US are on a rolling basis, so this means that if your application is considered first, your chances of getting in are greatly increased. More on this at the end though. I would only recommend doing this if you have a strong application for a particular school that is also among your top choices. You save money this way as well. If you don't get an interview, you can technically still apply to other schools after October 1st. However, your chances of getting an interview after that are pretty slim. Now let's talk about your academic record. Most schools are going to require prerequisite courses and they might vary from school to school. But most schools actually require general chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, and biology. Check to make sure you actually have these courses. If not, you can actually take them in the year of applying, given that you take them before matriculation. You guys knew this was coming, but having a high GPA is really important for medical school admissions. Medical schools in the States divide how they look at your GPA into your cumulative GPA and your science GPA. Like the name suggests, your cumulative GPA includes all of the courses you've taken throughout your university program, whereas your science GPA is largely just your science courses. Usually someone's science GPA is lower than their cumulative GPA because science courses are generally more difficult. In terms of what GPA you need to get accepted into medical school, if you don't want to go to an Ivy League school, you don't necessarily need a 3.9. Again, I would recommend using MSAR or DO Explorer to kind of find out what requirements are depending on the schools you want to apply to. A rule of thumb is that DO schools generally have a lower GPA requirement compared to MD schools. However, you also have to keep in mind that if your GPA is low, you can make up for that by having other things on your application like having a high MCAT score or having a variety of extracurriculars that speak for your application. Speaking of your MCAT, let's address that next. In the US, the MCAT scores are looked at pretty holistically with no emphasis on a particular section, unlike Canadian medical schools. I'm looking at you, McMaster. Generally speaking, an upward trend in your MCAT score is actually looked at positively by admissions committee so don't freak out if you get a bad score on your first attempt some schools actually take your best attempt some might average out your mcat scores it's really dependent on each school other exams that are assessed by medical schools include casper a situational judgment test that assesses your responses to specific ethical scenarios we've all scored a fourth quartile on this exam which is the highest possible mark that you can receive on this exam we've made tons of videos on how to succeed and score that fourth quartile We've also compiled our advice into worksheets, which span over 50 pages and include many detailed, comprehensive fourth quartile type answers. These come directly from us, and we find that having these answers give you guys more insight into how we think, 
So if you want to check those out, the link is in the description below. AAMC Preview is a new requirement that's being tried out by other medical schools. It's pretty similar to Casper, however, there isn't much information on it right now. If you want to keep up to date, make sure you subscribe because we're going to be coming out with updates as we learn more information. Probably the most important part of your medical school admission is your primary application. The portal to submit this is called AMCAS or the American Medical College Application Service. I can't believe I got that right on the first try. So on this AMCAS portal, you must submit your transcripts from universities, your MCAT scores, your personal statement, your biological information, 15 of your most meaningful experiences, as well as your letter of recommendations. Let's dissect the part about your extracurriculars. What you have to do is list 15 experiences complete with the timeline and number of hours you've put in that showcase yourself best to the medical school admissions committee. You can select a work experience, an award, an extracurricular, a hobby, anything you feel would best represent yourself. You can add a maximum of four occurrences for a single activity, meaning if you engage in a particular activity at different points in your life, you can make those separate entries. Unless this activity has changed a lot over time or it's a very significant part of your life, we would recommend recommend sort of diversifying your application as opposed to mentioning the same activity multiple times. Once you've done this, you'll get the opportunity to select three of your most meaningful experiences and in 1325 characters, you'll have to explain why. This is essentially your chance to explain why you're so passionate about these activities and why these experiences make you a great medical student and a future physician. We'd recommend referencing the values of the medical schools you're applying to if you're thinking of how to frame your essay. Next is your letter of recommendations. AMCAS accepts three types of letter of recommendations. The first one is the committee letter, which is written by your pre-health committee or your pre-health advisor, which shows how the university or the institution views your capabilities. The next is letter packet, which is sent by your university's career committee. Finally, you can submit individual letters for those who are not part of the institution. The number of letters required vary from school to school, so be sure to check out the school you're applying to for their specific requirements. Ideally, for your references, you should be choosing individuals that have known you for an extended period of time and people that have worked directly with you or have supervised you. These individuals are able to give the most genuine description of your capabilities. Also, one thing to note is that you can reuse reference letters between years as long as you ask for permission. Don't feel pressure to keep asking your referees for new ones when you can simply just ask them to reuse the same reference letter. You should only be asking them to write a new one if you guys have engaged in different types of activities that are very significant and can change the shape of your reference letter. The final but important part of your application is a personal statement. We have an entire video dedicated on this, so watch that for more specific advice. For basic terms, there's a 5300 character limit and this is the place where you can tell all these medical schools why you want to go into medical school, why you want to become a doctor. The goal is to be as genuine as possible and create a story around this and why you want to go into medicine. You can use an essay format or a narrative style when you're writing. It's the most important part of your application, so you need to put your all into it and I would get many, many medical students to review it before submitting. People often assume that telling a story is enough. But the whole point of the personal statement is to show how your experiences helped you develop this passion for medicine. In other words, how you develop those skills that are asked of a good physician. These include leadership, communication, collaboration, and many more. In terms of free resources, I'm going to link a document in the description which includes personal statements from people who have gotten accepted into Ivy League schools like Stanford. Definitely check it out. We're almost at the end now, guys. Your secondary application is the next component to talk about. Some schools send secondaries to every single applicant, whereas others may send secondaries to only those with exceptional primary applications. The secondary usually contains essay questions that are particular to the school that you're applying to. Here, you may want to reference the values of the medical school and incorporate them into your question. Also, if you're applying to many schools and if you've written secondaries for previous schools, you can reuse parts of those answers for the future secondaries. Keep in mind though that the questions may be pretty different, so you're gonna have to tweak your answers accordingly. This is just to save you the amount of effort of rewriting an entire essay. If all goes well, you'll get interviews. Now these interviews can be multiple mini interviews, the MMI or panel interviews. We've done many, many videos on how you should interview. We've done mock interviews so you can see how they'd really be. So make sure you go check those out.
The interview makes or breaks your application, so you need to work really hard. But after you're done your interview, it's just a waiting game. Now that we've discussed all the different types of aspects that are related to your medical school application, let's talk about when you should get started. Now remember that this applies to both MD and DO, and it is a very rough timeline. So don't be too freaked out if things don't go to plan. You should ideally begin taking your prerequisites one to two years before you actually apply. So if you're in your fourth year, you might have started taking your prerequisites in your first and second year. At the same time, in your first and second year, you might want to come up with a list of all of the medical schools you want to apply to over those two years. Some of the ways you go about creating this list is through research, through the tools mentioned like MSAR and DO Explorer and by speaking to current admissions representatives as well as medical students. This period of time is also when you need to think about getting letters of recommendation. Get registered with the pre-help committee at your university and start talking to professors early so you can form those connections you need to get those letters in the future. Here's a nice graphic by Med School Insiders. It gives you a good idea of when you should complete the rest of the components in your application. In the year of your application, say 2024, you should ideally be taking your MCAT between September 2023 and May 2024. This is because the MCAS portal opens up in May 2024, so you want to maximize your chances as medical schools accept students on a rolling basis. If you've never taken the MCAT before, you can actually submit the rest of your application before your MCAT score is released. So if you're not able to take it before May, don't worry at all. Do keep in mind though that for most schools, you won't be receiving your secondaries until your MCAT is submitted. This will set you back in the context of rolling admissions. You want to submit your application within the month of May. The first thing you want to keep in mind when AMCAS opens up is requesting your transcript. This can take a long time and your primary application will only be looked at once your transcript is in. This is a problem because you guessed it, medical schools offer admissions on a rolling basis and the earlier you apply, the better. You should also know that your letter of recommendations can be submitted after you submit your primary application. However, we would recommend against this because you want to give medical schools as much information about yourself as possible to assess you on. Once you submit your primary, you'll ideally want to submit your secondaries anywhere between June and July. Keep in mind though that a lot of schools have a hard cutoff around October or November to be submitting all components of your application. By this time, it's really late in the admissions process anyway, so the chances you get an interview are very slim. Interviews can come out anywhere between August 2024 to February 2025. Admissions can come out anytime between January 2025 and April 2025. And this brings us to the end of our video on a comprehensive guide to the US medical school admissions process. If you guys learned something, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you guys have any questions at all, be sure to comment down below. See you guys next Monday.